What's up everyone, Vitaly here from Hertz Recording Studios. So we've got this short fragment of a drum part. And it sounds horribly robotic. So we're gonna try and fix it using dynamics. All the notes in this drum part are now playing at the max velocity of 127. And this is not right. The drum software we're using is called Hertz Drums, and it supports up to six dynamic groups of samples. It means that when a note's velocity falls within one of these ranges, the plugin is going to play one of the samples from the corresponding sample group. So there's no need to use the max velocity all the time to make our drums hit hard. A good starting point would be the lower limit of the hardest hitting group, which is 108. Now let's focus on the kicks. So there are groups of dotted eighths and groups of sixteens. In the groups of dotted eighths, I'm going to leave the first stroke at 108 and turn the velocity on the subsequent strokes down to 100 to 102, so that the plugin uses samples from two different dynamic groups for these strokes, and none of them sound the same. Listen closely and you'll hear the difference. Now I'm selecting all of the sixteenths and turning their velocity down to 100. Then I'm going to select every second note in these groups and move them to kick left, and then set their velocity a bit lower. Now it's going to feel like the drummer is using their two feet to play this. Let's move on to the snares. The plugin distinguishes between six articulations on the snare. Snare center, snare edge, and snare rim shot, with L and R standing for the left and right hand. What's interesting about this plugin is that instead of being stacked upon one MIDI note, each of these articulations has its own note assigned to it. It means it can adjust their velocities independently. So you could have a super loud center stroke or a soft and quiet rim shot if you wanted to. And this isn't something I see often in other drum plugins. So to give this beat a punchy metal kind of feel, I'm going to move these strokes to snare rim shot. I'm also slightly increasing the velocity of these notes. But if you're going for a mellower vibe, just use the snare center articulation. Now let's add some ghost notes to make it sound more organic. We're doing this on a normal snare center articulation. And the point is to keep the velocities within the range of the lowest dynamic group. Let's give it a listen. All right, sounds pretty cool already. Let's now take a look at the symbols. I want to bump up the velocity on those crashes, but just a tiny bit to get a stronger accent. And on the china, I'm going to leave the strokes played on the counts 1 and 3 at 108, but I'm going to turn the velocity on the rest of the strokes a tiny bit down, so that they fall within a quieter dynamic group. We're doing it because in this type of beats, drummers tend to hit their cymbals harder when they're played together with the kick on one or the snare. That sounds nice, but we need to do something with this drum fill at the end, because it still sounds horrible. It starts with the snare run. To me, the best sounding articulation for snare fills is snare edge. Faster sequences of strokes are naturally played at lower velocities, so we're going to keep the first note's velocity fairly high, while for the rest of the notes, I'm setting it as low as 70. Let's assume that the drummer starts this fill with the right hand, and that it's stronger than their left hand. To emulate that, I'm going to select every odd-numbered stroke and move them to snare edge right articulation and bump their velocity up to 85, except for the first stroke, which is already loud. Now this group of 32nd notes needs to go quieter than the 16th, so let's turn their velocity down so that the quietest of them fall within the range of this dynamic group. I'm also slightly increasing the velocity of the four last notes because I want them to feel like the culmination of this snare buildup. Now the plugin is using snare samples from four different dynamic groups to play this bit. And finally the toms. First, let's select every second tom stroke and move it up to the left hand articulation. Now let's get some cool dynamics going. After a lot of experimentation, I found that I like it when the velocity slightly increases at the start and at the end of the run, 
and also at the moments when the drummer is moving from one tom to another. Okay, now it's time for a good old before versus after comparison. Let's hear it. Alright, as you can hear, the difference is staggering. I hope you find these tips useful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.